We're going to have a good week here because it's Manager's Week, powered by Citrix, which means we'll get a chance to talk to a lot of them. They kind of fall on our little window here. I know if I was on at 3 a.m., he'd still come on. He's our good buddy, Tori Lovello. He manages the Diamondbacks. He would be available, right, Tori? No matter what day I was on, nice to have you. Yeah, How are you doing today? Okay? I love my time with you, of course. You're the best. All right, now, uh, let's talk about the year first. I mean, it was a tricky year to navigate. Uh, you know, lots more teams in the playoffs. I know the Diamondbacks struggled some. You know, you can throw it out. You probably got over it pretty quick. What was your take on the 60 games? Let me get a sense there first. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. First of all, you know, Major League Baseball, getting from start to finish and getting to that finish line and, and having a world champion was 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 pretty impressive. Um, and as an industry, we should be proud of what we did. We had to make a lot of sacrifices. It wasn't just the players. It wasn't just the staff. It was the families behind the scenes. It was front offices and their families, uh, ownership. It was everybody uh, that, that made an incredible sacrifice to make good things happen. So, you know, it, a, a, a champion was crowned. Um, you know, our year wasn't the type of year that we wanted to have. Obviously, uh, we had a 20 game stretch where uh, we didn't play good baseball and that cost us. I feel like we were playing good baseball when the season ended. Had we had the opportunity to continue, I felt like we would have, we would have chased some people down. And that's the beauty of a 162. But we knew the ground rules going in. We knew that there was gonna be only um, 60 games. And uh, unfortunately, we had that, that stretch and it cost us. But um, it's, for, it's time for us to reload, get ready, have a good off season and, and get ready for 2021. All right. How about the rules? Uh, let's do DH 10, uh, 10th inning scenario and seven inning double headers DH first. We're not sure what we're going to have in the NL yet. Are you I'm sure you probably are. You're in favor of the DH. I'm assuming even though you got mass and bum Gardner, Tory, what can you tell me about that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, look, I'm a baseball traditionalist. Um, we are, right now we're following the current guidelines and nationally guidelines, and that's what we're going to get ready for. Um, and that's that's what I've been told is um, you know something they're strongly considering. And uh, you know, the 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 pitcher hitting adds an extra com uh, strategic component to it, and and I enjoy that part of the game. So you know, knowing that uh, either way is fine for me. Um, I know the DH adds a completely different quality of um, of an at bat. Uh, which is going to lead to more runs. I know Major League Baseball wants to add more runs. So, you know, look, I'm on the fence. I didn't give you a good answer. Uh, I do enjoy the strategic component of being a National League manager and having to deal with where that pitcher's hitting and when he's going to be coming up because it is quite challenging. Uh, 100%. As a fan, I agree with you there, too. Number two, uh, tenth inning this past year. I don't think you're going to have it again. I, well, maybe they will because I loved it. I, I, thought it. I don't need 20 inning ball games. I think it added an interesting strategic component. I was for that. How about you? Let me hear. Go ahead. Yeah, I feel like it added instant offense, and it made uh, things become very, very interesting um, after that ninth inning. You knew that you were going to, uh, you know, obviously start off with a runner second base, and it, it helped some some runners score. And it really limited the length of the games. And and with the challenging season that was going to be put before us and the amount of players in, in the player reservoir, uh, we had to protect some pitching, and it was done for a very good reason. Uh, we didn't play a lot of them. But the ones that we played, it was it was instant excitement. It was, you know, buckle in, strap it on, let's get ready to go because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and I didn't mind that. It was, a, it was an adrenaline rush. Uh, I think all baseball people are adrenaline junkies up to cert a certain extent. And I feel very good about, you know, if they decide to stay with it, I think it's going to protect that pitching, and that's really what this game's all about. Yeah, how you go? Good answer. All right, how about the uh, – I'm not sure what they're going to do about this. I don't think they will in, in – do it? Did you? I don't know if you even played one. How about the? You probably didn't in the NL West. How about the seven inning double, the two, the seven inning double headers? What's your take on that? Yeah, I think um, I, I, we did play one double header. Uh, you know, we're indoors, so it didn't happen very often. Uh, but we did, we did get clipped one time. So uh, I, I'm more in favor of the, the traditional nine inning baseball game. Um, that's just my own personal opinion. I know that it was done for a very good reason. Once again, to protect the pitching and and the amount of innings. Uh, potential innings over a um, uh, you know two game stretch, but I feel like that that's that eighth and ninth inning. You know you can't budget for it. It's so unpredictable. It's the best part of the day. Uh, it's it it's the ending to the story, right? You don't want to clip that story at the wrong time. You want to let it play out, and it builds up, and you can feel feel it building up throughout the course of the game. For the double headers that I that we did play. I felt like it was just a little bit awkward. You knew in the sixth inning, it was a little bit different type of management of, of, the, of, the, of the players. Uh, it was something that was a little bit different to me. I guess I'd be more in favor of playing nine inning baseball games. 
Now, there you go. Another good answer. All right, how about the ball club now? Listen, tough division. Padres better. They got you off to a bad start last year, losing those first three out of four. Padres mm -hmm. are better. Uh, you know, the Dodgers are the world champs. You know, uh, who knows on Colorado or the Giants. Well, the Giants were pretty competitive and, two, and hurt you. Hurt you guys. Uh, they're yeah. at home in San Francisco. But, you know, pretty competitive in 2020. Give me the thought process of where the Diamondbacks could be here next year as far as the divisional scenario is concerned. Go ahead. Yeah, we know we play in a very rugged division. And we got the world champion in L.A. Dodgers, um, you know, obviously uh, lead, leading the charge. And they've done it for a long time. So to unseat them, you're going to have to play some good baseball. And uh, if it's a full 162, we're going to prepare for that. Uh, but you got to be careful too. You're right. You nailed. You nailed it. There's a couple of really good baseball teams besides the LA Dodgers, uh, the San Diego Padres with AJ Preller uh, reloading that farm system, um, and you know uh, at the top that's finally matched with some really good free agents and some good trades. They, they're they're a quality baseball team. You know every time you play the Padres, they're going to be very prepared and ready to go. Um, and you're right. The Giants was were a team that everybody took lightly because um, you know Bruce Bochy retiring. But I think Gabe stepped in there and did a phenomenal job of getting his guys ready to play baseball. Uh, and they were in the race until the final day of the season. And that was one team that we didn't play good baseball against. I think uh, we, we didn't have a very good record against them. And that was a difference maker for us. And I think that's the reason why we were looking up. So the NL West, like I said, very rugged, very good baseball teams. We're not going to take anybody for granted. We'll be ready to go. Uh, what's the biggest improvement needed for the Diamondbacks, you know, for the folks of, uh, who haven't seen them specifically too much even last year, we didn't see him in the East, nothing along those lines. What's the big area of need that you'd like to at least work on fulfilling here in this offseason, Tori, in your eyes, what will that be? Yeah, I think, you know, what we talked about was a consistent offensive uh, approach. Um, you know, there are certain games where we go out and we, we'd wipe you out, but on those days where you're facing some tough pitching and, you know, figure out a way to grind out that four to three game or three to two ball game and come out on the right side of it. We have very good baseball players on this team, and I, I expect a lot of them. I know they're going to make some good adjustments and come out slugging and make sure that we score some runs. You know, and every year I know that uh, it's it's a philosophy um, that we've, we've followed for the past couple of years. It's not rocket science. You know, you just want to get some quality arms and quality pitching. So uh, we got a really good, healthy farm system that's going to start to, uh, you know, uh, yield some really nice uh, arms in that area. But, you know, once again, Mike Hazen does a phenomenal job with his group of guys moving forward to bring in the best players, send down, you know, the best, you know, 28, 30 players to help us win baseball games. Once again, it's all about getting ready and playing, competing in 2021. I'm I don't know when exactly, but I do think we'll have a, you know, a pretty regular season. Uh, spring training, who knows when it starts? Any thoughts? Uh, you're out there in Scottsdale. You yeah. train there. You think it's going to be in February? Any thoughts on when we can sort of see a ramped up in spring training? Tori, what do you have for me there? Yeah, I think what we're talking about is, um, you know, every, or what, what, I, what I'm seeing is what's being talked about publicly. Everybody that um, is reading, uh, I'm reading the same thing everybody else is. Uh, I believe very firmly that we can play a full 162 and have a full spring training. We just have some new normals and new protocols we're going to have to follow, which we started to, and uh, we started to really dial into towards the end of last year. Last year, things evolved. We weren't sure what it would be like at the beginning. We followed it. Things got better. MLB did a phenomenal job of establishing those protocols. I think if we follow those, we can play a full 162. But I haven't heard one way or another what's going to be happening. I don't know exactly if we will or if we won't, but we're going to prepare for that. And once the new year starts, it starts to trickle downhill. and We start to prep our minds and prep our bodies uh, to go in, in in February and make good things happen. And that'll be my mindset.